Let's talk about finding the number of unpaired electrons for complex ions. So what we want to do is first find the oxidation state of our metal ion in question. Next, we go to a periodic table, find the electron configuration for our metal atom in question. Afterwards, we find the electron configuration for the metal ion. And we do that by removing the electrons from this configuration. Next, we use the appropriate model for your orbitals based on the geometry of your complex ion in question. And these models can have various shapes. For example, you have an octahedral model, you have a tetrahedral model, you have a square planar model, and you have a linear model. So again, these can come in various shapes based on the way your ligands are arranged around your metal atom. So in these models, you have to follow the rules for filling, and it's based on a high and low delta value. This delta value in question refers to the splitting of your 3D orbitals. If you aren't given the delta value for some reason um, for determining whether it's high or low, you can use what we call the spectrochemical series, which lists out various uh, ligands based on their strength. So whether or not they're a strong field ligand, or a weak field ligand. Strong field ligands will have a large delta value and be low spin, and weak field and ligands will have a small delta value and a high spin. So here's the spectrochemical series. So now that we understand the rules for finding the number of unpaired electrons, let's go ahead and look at some example problems. So here we're given FeCn6. And if we look at it closely, we can deduce that it's an octahedral shape based on the number of ligands around it. So first of all, we want to find the oxidation state of our metal ion in question. So here we have six cyanides. Each cyanide will have a negative one charge, and since we have six of them, it's going to be a negative six charge for them total. And we have to balance everything out, so we have a negative three charge total. So in that case, our iron oxidation state will be at plus 3. Next we want to look at a periodic table and find the electron configuration for our metal atom in question. So that's not the ion, just the atom. If we look here, here is iron and we can see that it's 4s2, 3d1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So 4s2, 3d6 is going to be our um, electron configuration in question. Now, for us to have our ion, we're going to have to lose three electrons. So, first of all, we take our electrons away from our higher um, orbital value first. So, take two away from our 4s2, and drops down to 3d6 alone. Then take away one more, so it's a total three missing. So that turns into 3d5. And that's going to be electron configuration for our ion. So 3d5, what that means is that there's going to be five electrons to pull in. So again, here is our octahedral model. And if we fill it in, we're going to actually have this um, electron configuration. Because if we look at our spectrochemical series, we can see that it's going to have a large delta value because cyanide is a strong field ligand. So in this case, with a large delta value, we're not going to be able to get to these levels until we fill in all of these levels first. So how are we going to fill in these five electrons? We're going to go one, two, three, four, five. So we have this configuration, meaning we only have one unpaired electron. Let's do another example problem, CrCn6. In this case, it's going to also be an octahedral. CN6, so it's going to be negative 6 total for the cyanides. So we want a negative 4 total. So it's going to be a plus 2 oxidation state for the chromium. And for chromium, it's going to have a 4s2, 3d1, 2, 3, 4. But the chromium is an exception because it's near our 3d5 orbital in question. So instead of 4s2, 3d4, we're actually going to have 4s1, 3d5, because we'd rather have a nearly half-complete 3d orbital. 
so here we are, Forest 1 3D5 for chromium. Now, to make it become an ion, we're going to have it lose two electrons, so minus one away from our Forest 1, and minus one away from our 3D5. That's going to equal out to a 3D4 electron configuration. And 3D4 means there's going to be four electrons. And again, it's going to have a large delta value because cyanide is a strong field ligand. So when we put these electrons in, it's going to be shaped like 1, 2, 3, and 4. Here we have two unpaired electrons. For FeH206, we can deduce that it's an octahedral based on the number of ligands, 6. So again, we want to find the oxidation state of our metal ion. H2O is going to be neutral, so it's going to have a charge of 0. So in order to have an overall plus 2 charge, we're going to have an oxidation state of plus 2 as well. So again, we want to find our electron configuration using the periodic table. For iron, it's going to be um, for us, 2, 3D6, if we want to turn it into an ion, we're going to remove two electrons, and that's going to turn it into a 3D6 electron configuration, which means six electrons to fill in. Um, because H2O is a weak field ligand, by looking at the spectral chemical series, we can say that we can access these higher orbitals without having to fill these first three first. So how are we going to fill this in? Six electrons. We're going to fill it in as one, two, three, four, five, and six. So here we have one, two, three, four unpaired electrons total. For COCl4, we're actually given that it's going to be a tetrahedral shape instead of a square planar. In these cases where we have four ligands, it's not easy to differentiate between the shapes. So you're usually given the shape. So let's begin again. Let's find the oxidation state of our metal ion. So each chlorine will have a negative one charge, so four of them will have a negative four charge total. In order to have an overall negative two charge, our cobalt will have to have a plus two charge. So again, looking at our periodic table, we can figure out our electron configuration. In order to turn it into an ion, we're going to have to lose two electrons, so that's going to give us a 3d7 charge, which means seven electrons total. And in this case, this is going to be in a tetrahedral shape, so it'll be three on top and two on the bottom. And for a tetrahedral, we should note that it's always going to be a weak value for our delta. Um, so in this case, we want to figure out seven electrons. So we're going to fill it in like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, because it's weak, we can access these top three um, these higher level orbitals without needing to fill the bottom ones first. And that's going to give us three unpaired electrons total. For NiCN4, we're given that it's going to be in square planar shape. So for our cyanides, it's going to be negative one each. So total for cyanides would be negative four. Overall charge would be negative two. So we want our nickel oxidation state to be plus two. If we look at our periodic table, we can see that our electron configuration is 4s2, 3d8. We lose two electrons to make our ion, which is going to give us eight total electrons to fill in. It's going to be in a square planar form, so it's going to look like this. Notice that we have a very large delta value from the top orbital to the bottom orbital. This is more or less always going to give us a low spin case, so it's going to be a large delta value. In this case, how we fill this in with eight electrons is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's going to give us zero total unpaired electrons. This is more or less how you find the number of unpaired electrons for complex ions.